and I never never thought I was hurting anybody because I, I did it alone. Um, nobody ever saw it. Nobody was ever there. Going to church and going to Sunday school and Bible school every summer and youth group and just knew all about God and all the familiar Bible stories and um, just never believed that any of them were for me. It always just made me feel like complete worthless. And so that's what I carried around with me was, you know, you're not good enough. You don't fit in. You're not worth it. I mean, by the time I was a teenager, I, I just didn't even want to live with it anymore. And I would just go to school and come home and, and more days than not, I would just go straight to my bedroom and just sit there and cry because I just, I didn't have anything left. I really just didn't want to live anymore. When I was 17, I met a boy. He was quiet and sensitive and thoughtful and he liked me. And I thought, you know, could this really be happening? Like, could someone actually choose me? I grew up in a single parent home. I wasn't allowed to see my dad until I was a senior in high school. I'd see him once every few years for about five minutes. That void made me feel alone. We were constantly moving around. I was really isolated, um, didn't really get into sports, didn't do anything in school, just kind of kept my nose in the books, hoping, you know, if I got good grades, maybe I could go to a good school and just get away. In sixth grade, I had a, a friend one day, he got out some some magazines with some nude women in them. Um, that was probably my first exposure. You know, over time there were there were other instances where I would come across pornography in different forms, whether it be video or magazines. Every couple of years I would run into that, but in high school it really really took off. The more I looked, the the more you had the craving for it. It's an easy place to turn because you're not rejected. It was it was an escape. It's how I dealt with stress. Uh, junior year I met my wife. I noticed her because she was funny. Uh, she was pretty and she talked to me. We got to know each other um, so much so that we decided to go to the same college lived in the dorms for a couple years, then moved in together, shared an apartment. And all during that time, every time I got stressed out, we would argue or something would go wrong. My fallback was looking at porn because it it was an escape from reality. It, it was a way that I could control the negative thoughts and the feelings. And the first time she found it, we got in a really big fight. We almost split up after that. I think we've been dating about two and a half years. I sat down at his computer and saw that he had been looking at porn and it crushed me because I was wrong. It was kind of like, you stupid girl, what made you think that you could be worth it? For 16 years, that's what happened. It just took a slow toll. We, we bought nice things, we had fun, but something was missing. We had our, our first daughter and that brought more stress. So I reverted back to my escape. Porn calmed me down, it got me through the day. I would find it and we would fight and I would just be reminded over and over and over again that, that I wasn't good enough. It was just a roller coaster ride first 15 years of our marriage, first 20 years we were together, and it just progressively got worse. Then we had Addie, then the recession hit, you know, lost my position, lots of things happened, so we decided it was time to be close to family, so we moved back home. A couple of years later, we had Jack, but the stress was still there. And I found it again, and I just, I was done. She said, enough, we can't do this anymore. 
So for three years, I tried to will my way through it. I just didn't do, but then I didn't have anywhere to go with the stress. I didn't have anybody to talk to. That stress built back up and I reverted back to poor. Something must have started to change in me too. And so by the time I found more porn in 2016, rather than going back to that, taking it on me, wanting to end my life, I, I, I was done. I had so much anger. I was furious, I was done. I just wanted a divorce. And I remember thinking, okay, in a week, if you still wanna get a divorce, then we'll figure out how to make that happen. And after about four or five days of not even speaking, I remember being in the car, he was crying and he said, if I, I can't lose you because if I do, I won't have anybody. And I didn't care at all. And I thought, buddy, I'm already gone. The week came and went, I was ready to sign. I wanted out. And I just remember hearing, wait. And I told him he needed to talk to somebody, he needed to get help. And he said, no, it's just, that's not going to happen. And so I told him that he needed to leave, find somewhere else to go. And I got up, I walked out of her bedroom, and I absolutely terrified that I just ended our marriage, which isn't what I wanted. He didn't choose to find somewhere else to go. He chose to talk. I thought of the supervisor that I had, and I reached out to him. I went to his house and talked to him and his wife, and just said, look, my marriage is basically over. I'm struggling. I need help. Can you help me? They both said, yes, we're going to let God help us. I started a book study with him. A couple weeks into it, he said, you know what? I've been thinking about your story. And I have a friend at church who stood up in church and shared that he had the same struggle and he was done. Would you like to meet him? His friend came over. I just asked him to share his story. And... It was me just hearing that I wasn't alone made a world of difference. They introduced uh, another program, a men's ministry called Soltan, to me and said, would you be willing to do this? I was over 300 pounds and I'm like, exercise is not for me, but whatever. You know what? I'm up for a challenge. I'll do it. The first week, I was laying flat on my back on the living room floor. I couldn't move but it was worth it. I was finally getting to know that my relationship with Jesus was the most important thing. And that relationship is what is going to save us. I really started to learn that I didn't have to will my way through it because there was somebody I could trust every day, every moment, no matter where I was. I just, I felt different. I felt like I was worth something. I felt like I was important. I felt like I was here for a purpose. The more I went through this program, the more calm I felt. And that need to find a material source or an outside source went away. The more it went away, the more I would share with my wife. And over time, I saw my wife hurting still. I got the courage to tell my kids what was going on. And I told him because I need to go fix my brain. But really, I wasn't going to fix my brain. I was going to heal my heart. Once I think that we're through the difficult times, something else happens and I, I find comfort in another verse. God just put the pieces together and there's no other way to say it. In a matter of a few months, I just saw I just saw him become this person that I had been looking for and I and I all the times I said I'm looking for your heart to change and I can't tell you what it's gonna look like but I'll know it when I see it and I saw it and I watched it everything we've gone through has prepared us for what we've done to this point and it's prepared
prepared me to trust in his word and know that I can rely on him, whether they were good moments, bad moments, horrible moments, devastating moments. They were all part of the path that brought us where we are, and I don't want to forget that because it makes me appreciate where we are now even 